Hello, my name is Tomasz Brzeniak. On behalf of Jerzy Giżejewski and myself, I would like to show you this presentation on glaciers. This presentation is supplementary material to work package uh, glaciers that was produced for ARIS project. Uh, Jerzy Giżejewski uh, and myself, we work at the Department of Polar and Marine Research at the Institute of Geophysics, Polish Academy of Sciences. And during our work, uh, We've done lots of measurements of different glaciers, and we also collected data ourselves. There, there are different glaciologists that do that. And the, its work package, you will find these data, and you will be asked to uh, fill the tasks prepared for this work package. The phase transition of water. In sure water it can be seen in different uh, states. It can be solid state as ice. It can be liquid state, so a state of water, so a fluid, and so water vapor in the gas state. Uh, there is trend between those states due to air temperature. Transitions are uh, named here on this chart. So between ice and liquid form, there is melting, freezing. Between and gas form, water, there's evaporation or condensation. That's between ice and gas, solid state and gas, is sublimation or deposition. Uh, the chart you can find and the transformation of uh, snow to glacial ice. So snowflake to glacier ice crystallizes from atmospheric moisture, uh, falls uh, in form of snowflakes, and accumulates on surface of Earth. As snow is accumulated, snow crystals become more and more compacted because of the layers from above that compact the layer of, uh, of snow cover. Uh, and this uh, snow crystals compacted, so the earth is forced from the pack, so its density increases. If you uh, prepare a snowball, you will also compact the snow, so you just push out the air from the pack. And form where snow is deposited during the cold season entirely melt during warm period. So snowflake goes through the transition uh, from granular snow to fur. And if it stays in the same place, there will be another year with snowfall. And if the uh, new layers of snow will compact this uh, snow underneath or fern, glacier ice can appear. Uh, seasonal snow cover can extend uh, on, on land uh, as presented here. This, this snow can stay throughout the summer, so it, it won't entirely melt. The topographic limit of permanent snow, so the snow that stays for continuous years, this limit it's called the snow line or equilibrium line altitude. It's an irregular line, which is created along the ground surface, where the accumulation of snowfall equals ablation. So on this line, melting and evaporation equal. Above, there is higher accumulation of snow, and below, there is higher ablation. So the snow wants stay below, uh, below this uh, equilibrium line altitude. And this varies greatly uh, in altitude in different parts of the world. Uh, average altitude of the snow line, uh, which are taken over large areas, uh, can be used to derive a climatic snow line, which rises or falls in altitude in response to worldwide climatic change. The poles, it reaches as low as zero meters above level, so at level, snow can be accumulated. In June, 
uh, here presented as uh, pink color. Uh, this line is between 200 and 1,000 meters above sea level. Uh, the temperate uh, zone uh, between 800 and 3,200 meters above sea level. In tropical zone, uh, this line is between 5,000 and 6,000 meters above sea level. Near the equator is between 4,500 to 5,000 meters above sea level due to their precipitation. The part presents a glacier, which can be formed. As you can see, in upper parts of the valley, uh, there is accumulation area. And, uh, the snow accumulates, the uh, glacier ice can be formed, and it goes down with the gl uh, gravity, flows down, but not as fast as in liquid form. It's not a river, but it's solid state, so it's uh, ice. And the ice moves down and reach below the equilibrium line altitude where it melts during summer. Uh, so part, the accumulation dominant. In low part of the glacier, accumulation is dominant. And full budget, if the ablation is higher uh, than accumulation, means that uh, glacier has negative mass balance and it will shrink. I can be also higher than ablation, and that means positive mass balance, so a glacier, a glacier can grow. Winter uh, glaciers usually, usually grow uh, because there is no accumulation, but during summer when it melts, in parts this snow can stay throughout the year in some places, especially the lower ones, it won't stay, so with different parts of the glacier. Accumulation zone and ablation zone. Then the mass balance snowpack depth. Uh, we measure uh, the snow cover using probing and snow pits. So we dig through the snow to reach the glacier ice, and we measure density of snow. So we get the information about snow water equivalent, how much water uh, would melt from the given uh, thickness of snow. Uh, this work package uh, on glaciers, you are asked to uh, draw the cross section of a glacier. The instructions, you should follow the instructions. You'll find uh, different information on a snow, uh, snow stakes, ocean stakes, as presented on the picture on the right. Asked to draw the cross section using this level map. Uh, this kind of uh, ablation stakes to measure the accumulation and ablation of snow and ice. In autumn, if we build the hole in the glacier and we put the ablation stake there, throughout there, and during winter there will be snow accumulation. In the end of the winter there will, there will be highest accumulation of snow and during spring the snow will melt away during the snow and even ice in ablation zone will melt from the information about the mass balance of glacier. Mass is usually expressed in terms of water equivalent as I mentioned before how much water will be melted from given thickness of snow or ice. For example if we melt 10 centimeters of snow with density 100 kilograms per cubic meter if one centimeter of snow water equivalent one 10 centimeters of ice with density around 900 kilograms per cubic meter plus nine centimeters of water water Example from Hans Brand, the glacier uh, which is located nearby the Polish Polar Station in Spitsbergen. Uh, we get information uh, from different ablation stakes. And stakes are named here from T1 to TL. And front uh, ears, there is information uh, about. Um, what equivalent from these different stakes on uh, in different years?
and now inflation from uh, springtime when the accumulation is the highest. So how much water melted away during ablation and was accumulated during winter. Uh, uh, that is done by uh, glaciologists. Glaciologists deal with uh, water, uh, with mass balance of glaciers and with water uh, accumulation in snow cover. And if you are asked to draw cross section of a glacier, and you will know the thickness of uh, of glacier in different parts of the surface of the glacier. Uh, if you will follow the steps from cross section from level map, you uh, your information about different altitudes uh, of the uh, glacier surface. And find using the ruler, uh, find that uh, the first ablation stake is not located at the sea level or at the very front of the glacier. It's upper. Uh, so using uh, using a ruler, you measure uh, the distance between ablation stakes, and from the level map, from this cross section, uh, yeah. from, uh, contour lines, you can uh, read the altitude. And you are asked to draw these altitudes on the chart. Uh, first, uh, yeah, follow the instructions. And you will be able to draw such glacier. You will be asked to uh, draw between those ablation states. And then you will get the information about the different levels of surface of the glacier. Thank you for your attention. Hope you will enjoy prepared work package.